Hi everyone, welcome back to Police Quest. Okay, so we're back here at the Drunk Driver because uh, there are actually a couple of things that I forgot to do. Well, one thing that I forgot to do and a couple of things that I should have done just to show what happens. The first thing I forgot to do is, funnily enough, is read the suspect his rights. So I think I clearly said in the last video there are three things to an arrest. One is to arrest, you know, to like actually put put the handcuffs on the suspect, you know, to arrest them, like to stop them. Second is to search them, and then third is to read them their standard Miranda rights. I remember the first two, but somehow I forgot the third. I really have no idea how. I think the reason I forgot the third is because I started uh, talking about how the, because the, the guy asked to be cuffed in front, and I got distracted thinking and talking about that, and I forgot, oh yeah, I'm supposed to read him his rights. So let's go ahead and, and do the whole thing with the rights. So, so let's talk to the guy and tell him to get out of his car. And uh, I guess I need to. Excuse me, but you're blocking the door, Ossifer. Okay, I need to get out of the way. There we go. Oh, I love that door opening sound effect. It's so awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and arrest the guy. Why, Ossifer? I'm as sober as a judge. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. We need to administer the field sobriety test first. Um, yeah, so we read that already. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and handcuff the guy. So now he asks uh, to be handcuffed in front. So, okay, l let's go ahead and say yes. You think he doesn't look too dangerous? Sure, why not? Right, okay, so we saw that, and now we can go ahead and say read rights. Carefully admonish your suspect of his Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. What you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you before questioning if you wish. So basically, you have the right to remain silent and you have the right to an attorney, which is, you know, I mean, which is fair. I mean, you know, people might find themselves saying things which can be taken out of context or basically it's just the right to not incriminate yourself towards the police because the police are actually not the ones who determine guilt. They're basically just the ones who, you know, who handle crime scenes and things like that. They're not actually the judicial. Basically, the, the police are the executive branch, and then the courts and such are the judicial branch, and they are to be kept separate. That's why people have the right to remain silent uh, when they are arrested by police. Okay, so that's what I forgot last time, but I don't think it matters. You don't actually get, you, you don't get points, funnily enough. You don't get points for reading the guy his rights, and I think he's probably too drunk to really, <laughs> to really, um, understand anyway so anyway okay so we've done that so now let's go ahead so that's done that's the thing that i forgot and then two things which i should have probably done just to show you what happens one is cuff the guy in front so let's go ahead and he's cuffed in front now so let's go ahead and get him in the police car let's uh open the door what do you mean you I have none. I have no prisoners what what about what about this fellow here okay maybe i need to first tell him to uh Get in car. You're not close enough. All right. I need to tell him to. All right. And yeah, I mentioned last time. I mean, somebody said cops can lie if they want. I I guess I don't know what the laws are about what police can and cannot say. I mean, isn't it to some extent, isn't it entrapment if police lie? I don't know. I guess police can lie to you. I mean, I wasn't necessarily saying that cops can't lie. Uh, because in most cases, I guess it's not illegal to lie as such, but I'm just saying it's not good practice. It's not good professional police practice to try to trick people or things like that. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't say that it's, it's exemplary behavior on the part of, uh, of police officers. Anyway, okay, so the guy goes ahead and he tries to go into the police car. Oh, he doesn't try to go into it. He walks up to it, but we have to open the door. just occurred to me, isn't that jingle the, the same one that plays, or almost, like, very close to the same one that plays when Mananen shows up in King's Quest Three? Which I guess makes sense, because I think somebody pointed out in a previous video, I think Margaret Lowe, Al Lowe's wife, scored both this game. Like, she did the musical score for both this game and King's Quest Three. so I guess it makes sense that they just kind of reuse the music. Um, you just fell victim to an old trick. There are two rules to remember. Always follow procedures and never trust a drunk. Now... That's kind of... That's kind of ridiculous. First of all, the guy is very drunk. So, 
drunk people really, you know, they have bad reaction times and they have bad coordination. So for him to be able to whack us that quickly uh, in the first place is kind of questionable. I don't think that he would have been able to hit us that quickly or that hard because, you know, you know, being drunk, it's difficult to coordinate your movements that well, especially if he's handcuffed. So first of all, first of all, he's drunk. Secondly, he's handcuffed. And third, okay, he might try to take a swing at us. I can understand, you know, he might try to, he, he might try to punch us out. But what are the chances? How likely do you find it? that a guy wearing handcuffs is going to, with his bare hands, with one hit, punch punch a police officer out with such force that the police officer collapses onto the ground in a pool of blood like this. Yeah, I understand that if you cuff the guy in front, he may get violent. He, tr he may try to take advantage of that and try to, you know, try to attack us. I mean, that's, okay, fair enough. That, that, I can understand that, yeah. But... This whole scene is just kind of ridiculous. That 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 he could actually do, and barehanded. I could understand if he'd had a knife, but we actually searched. Well, I, okay, I didn't search him this time, but I searched him last time. He he didn't have he he doesn't have a knife or any other. You know, he doesn't have brass knuckles. He doesn't have any weapons on him. He did that barehanded. That is just BS. That does not happen. Could, could not. I, I'd go as far as to say that's physically impossible. That might be, I'm trying to think, I mean, I guess under certain circumstances, maybe it's plausible. It's not completely inconceivable. You keep using that word. I don't think you need, I don't think it means what you think it means. But, okay, anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and load the game because there's one other thing that I wanted to show. And I don't think I saved, uh, I don't think I saved when we got to the prison. I think I saved after we got out of prison. So... I'm going to need to go through this whole thing again. So administer the field sobriety test. Uh, handcuff the guy. No, don't cuff him in front. We're going to need to get him to the... Uh, to this. Oh, let me search him just while I'm here. Okay, found no weapons. Yeah, you get no points for searching him. And let me just check. If you read him as rights... Yeah, you get no points for reading him as rights or searching him. I mean, it's good pro practice. You should do it in real life if you're a cop, but uh, but you don't get points for doing it here, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, tell him to get in the car. Oh, where are we going? All right. I like the way he walks. He walks like a bird, the way he kind of bobs and pecks with his head like that. Okay, open the door. Get in, sir. All right. Close the door. All right. Get in car. Get in car. And let's start driving. So, all right, where was the, where was the jail? I'm just going with lights and siren because I want to skip the, uh, I want to skip having to wait on traffic lights. Don't do that in real life if you're a police officer. It's not a, not a good practice. Okay, let's go ahead and get out here. So, some of you might be wondering, and a couple of people did comment on it, what happens if you don't put your gun in the locker? The lockers, or in a locker, the lockers are very clearly visible here, like you can't really miss them, but what happens if you just ignore them and just say, I'm just going to go on in without, uh, without, uh, without putting my gun in? Let's go ahead and push the button here. All right, um, so let's see. Oh, by the way, let me take a look at the jailer because uh, look at man. The reason I'm trying to do this is because somebody said I think the jailer is a woman. Talk jailer? I mean, there's no indication of the gender of the jailer. I just kind of assume for some reason that it's a guy. Somebody said they think it's a woman. I really can't tell. I guess the hair is... Eh, but but Sonny Bonds has similar hair. I mean, don't we have... Well, I can't... The game doesn't let me turn him around now, but I don't know. I Maybe it, maybe it is a woman. I don't know. Doesn't... Uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Anyway, let's go ahead and book the pri prisoner. The prisoner. What are you charging him with? DUI. Uh, yeah, so we do the, the whole booking slip. All right. And, okay, removes the gentleman cuffs and plays him behind door number one. Okay. Okay. 
Watch what happens. In fact, let me see if I can... Oh. Wait, what happened? Did I... That's interesting. I don't think that I pressed enter. Did I, did I press enter? I actually meant to not finish that command, but it, it looks like it might have actually done it. I'm sorry, I was going to try and slow the game down, but okay. Well, so much for that. Thinking about grabbing your gun, the drunk delivers a blow to the top of your head. You fall to the floor unconscious. Suddenly, he realizes what a bad decision he's made, but by then it's too late for you. You're a pile on the floor. Next time, lock up your gun before you enter a jail. Oh. Somehow the sound turned off. Wait, what? What's going on here? How did that happen? Oh, that's interesting. If you press the Alt key, which would be the, the Apple key on an actual Apple II GS, that acts as finishing the command. Okay, so that's why that happened. I didn't press enter, but I did press uh, the Apple key because uh, cause I wanted to go into the control panel. What I want to do is go into the Apple control panel to slow the, to slow the machine down so you can see what happens because that went a little fast. All right, sorry about that, folks, but I, I, guess, well, I, mean, I guess you can just re rewind the video and see what happens. So this is possibly even more ridiculous than what happened when we cuffed the guy in front. Okay, I understand we took his cuffs off, and so, okay, but look. The game said that this happened because he was thinking of grabbing our gun. Now, if you're going to attack a cop, does it really matter that much to you whether the cop is carrying a gun or not, or, or anyone? I mean, do you... Do you really think that anybody looks at a police officer and says, hmm, that police officer is carrying a gun. That motivates me to attack them. I mean, if they weren't carrying a gun, then well, I'll, just, I'll just behave myself. But if I see somebody carrying a gun, I think the best thing to do is to try to attack them because then I can take their gun from them. And the game makes it out to be our fault. I mean, yes, it is our fault that we didn't put our gun in the locker because that is proper procedure, but... Come on, that's... The, the guy punches us out, and the game blames it on us having our gun. Seriously now, that's, that's just, that's absurd. That's, that's like... And if we, if we don't have the gun, then the guy is just, he's very well behaved, just goes, just goes straight into his cell and doesn't, uh, doesn't say anything or do anything. I mean, come on. Okay, anyway. Interestingly enough, uh, in Police Quest 3, there's a scene very similar to this one. It plays out almost exactly like this in that you, know, you have a drunk driver, you pull him over, do the sobriety test, arrest him, take him to prison, uh, and you have to put your gun in the weapons locker, book him and you know, do all this. It's, it's, it's almost exactly the same scene and sequence of events. The difference in Police Quest 3 is if you do forget to put your gun in the locker or just refuse to for whatever reason, uh, you just have to pay a fine. So um, in Police Quest 3, besides having, you know, points, like, you know, adventure game points, as Sierra adventurers tend to have. Uh, you also have money in the game, and you have to pay some money. So you, you lose the points that you'd get for following proper procedure, and you lose some money. So that's the penalty in Police Quest 3. But in this game, you just straight up die. The guy just kills you right out if you if you don't... Uh... I, I could even understand him grabbing your gun. I mean, it is possible to grab an officer's gun. It's, it's happened... I've actually... It's happened uh, in the past that, you know people have just grabbed a police officer's gun. Uh, and I think, there, I think there are various ways that police try to stop that. I, I mean, you know, like guns are in, in holsters and it's difficult to get a gun out of the holster quickly enough, but you know, it, it, it can happen. I mean, I mean, e even in Germany it's happened, you know, like, I mean, Germany is generally a lot less violent, like there's much less gun violence in Germany than in, in the US, but even in Germany, I remember a couple of years ago reading about it, there was a case where actually um, people got into a fight and when the police arrived at the scene to respond to, you know, to a, a physical brawl between people, one of the people grabbed a cop's gun and shot the cop in the head and I think the cop died. So, you know, it, it can happen, it does happen, but um, that, that, 
a cop's gun being present is to blame for somebody hitting them on the head. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm taking this theme too far. Anyway, I should uh, I should get on with where we stopped at the at the end of the last uh, video. So here we go, leaving jail. So okay, so this is where we're done. We we uh, finished uh, booking the guy in jail. So let's go ahead and drive back to the station. And you know what? I'm just gonna turn on the lights and siren just for a sec there, just so that we can run that light without getting penalized for it. Or penalized, I mean, we, we would lose the game instantly. All right, can we park like this? Yes, we can. I parked <laughs> I parked perpendicular to the position of the car is in now, but it doesn't matter. You can still, the car just magically straightens itself out. All right, well, it's, it's not a driving simulator, obviously. Okay, so we're back at the station. Um, let me just check, were we supposed to do anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, we just yeah we just go back to the station and uh, okay that's fine. It's hard to say sometimes. The, the game's not always very good at giving you cues. Well, actually, one cue that it did give us is that um, we're supposed to apply for an open position. And oh, is that right? The PR twenty four must remain in the vehicle. Since when? Do police officers really not walk into stations carrying their nightsticks? Do they actually? All right, put nightstick. Okay, all right. It's nice that the game understood that, that I didn't have to date, say something ab absurdly convoluted like replace nightstick in its position in car. No, just put nightstick, okay. Uh, so wait, we're supposed to apply for, uh, for a position in narcotics. That was this area here. Where's the application? What's on this table here? Hmm. This is where you submit your reports and memos. Pad of blank memos. Where do you actually do the application? We're supposed to put in a transfer request to get transferred to the narcotics division because that's kind of like advancing Sonny's career. But do we, hold on, can we do that here? Can we fill out application? No, write application, write transfer. Save your writing for reports. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot, did I? Did I write in the notebook? Yes, I did. All right, good, good to know. Um, so, shouldn't you be out on patrol? Laura asks. Um, well, no, you told me to come here and, and apply for, can I just say apply? What's a apply? Transfer. How can you do that? Write transfer. Oh my goodness. Um, what do we do here? Um, do we need to... Oh, wait. If that gremlin keeps messing with me, says Sergeant Dooley, I'm going to notify Internal Affairs to start an investigation. When I find out who the little weasel is, says Sergeant Dooley, in case you forgot who was, uh, in case you forgot the person who was speaking, you'd better believe that he or she will be walking a football from the river. Oh, a football. <laughs> a foot beat. He or she'll be walking a foot beat from the river all the way to Joe's junkyard. Okay. Hey, Sonny, Dooley says he's going to start a big internal affairs investigation just because some fool put a stinking smelly bird on his desk. Why are these people following me? Sonny, you should have seen Sergeant Dooley when he first discovered that chicken. He threw a screaming fit and wanted the lieutenant to dust for prints. Actually, it's not a bad idea. Dust for footprints and maybe DNA evidence. Look at Dooley. The man has gone berserk. I thought that new desk decoration was rather comical. Okay, what I'd like to know is why is everyone following me? Like, seriously, look at this. This is just, this is just kind of creepy. Like, what, what, what are they doing? Good grief. Uh, okay, I guess we should go in here. You can hardly believe your eyes. A full-grown chicken with its legs tied together is flapping about and clucking raucously right on Sergeant Dooley's desk. Feathers fly everywhere, but that's not the worst. Unfortunately, the chicken has lost control of her bodily functions. The mysterious gremlin has struck Sergeant Dooley again. Sonny, if I found out you are that inconsiderate, worthless gremlin, I'll hang you out to dry. Really? 
you think to yourself, this is one excited chicken, as you watch it flop, squirt, and cluck around on Dooley's desk. You bite your lip trying to keep from laughing. I don't know, I mean... Yeah, you don't want to do that. Who dirty their clean uniform picking up her chicken that has just relieved herself all over Sergeant Dooley's desk? Uh, talk to Dooley? Dooley shouts out. If I swear, if I catch that gremlin, whoever he is, I'm going to make hamburger out of him. It might be a her. You said him or her before, but now you just said him. All right. Let's, uh, can I talk to him some more? No? Okay, let's get out of here. Hey, Sonny, you're off duty, aren't you? Some of us are going to going by the blue room to throw Jack a little surprise party. After you change clothes, why don't you stop by? The dancer we hired for Jack's party is something else. Okay. All right. Sure would be nice if the city fixed some of these vents in here. Smells like one big cattle yard after every shift change. All right, uh, so I guess we're off duty. Um, but I thought we were supposed to put in a trans... Hold on, let me just quickly... Let me just quickly check a walkthrough, because um, this... I have to admit, this is one game that I don't know that well compared to... You know, I mean, there are some... Like, a lot of Sierra Adventures, I've just... I've played them so many times that I pretty much know exactly what you're supposed to do. This is not one of them. I mean, I I played this game, but I don't remember all the details uh, by heart. So let me uh, let me just make sure that uh, that I'm not missing anything here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, I see. Okay, I guess I am supposed. Okay, I guess I am supposed to do my off-duty stuff first. So let me. Okay, let's go ahead and open the locker. Uh, put the belt, yep, you remove the ammunition from your revolver, place it on the shelf, and hang your gun belt on the locker door. Okay, so put the belt back. What else do we have here? Um, wait, didn't it say I put the ammo back? Put ammo, okay. It's. I thought it said yep, that I put the ammo back, but then, okay, I don't know, I have no idea. Um, wear clothes. Oh, regulations require a shower before changing. Okay, fine. Close locker. All right, let's go ahead and take a shower. Turn on shower. Ah, something a nice hot shower. Yes, take a shower. Yes. Okay. Close. Not close. Turn off shower. I wonder if closed shower works. I mean, technically it's opening and closing the faucet, so maybe. I don't know. All right. Um get clothes. All right, there we go. Was there anything else that I needed to do? Let me just quickly check. Is there anything um, anything else that I um, need to do here? I guess not. Okay. All right, fine. Let's go ahead and... Uh, oh, I need to get the key, right? Yeah, you grab the keys to your vet. Yeah, that's right. We take the keys to our uh, Corvette, uh, to our personal car. Okay, go ahead and close the locker. All right, now look at us. Now we're in nice civilian clothes. I think we saw that message before, and if not, I'm not reading it. Okay, we also shouldn't forget... Um, oh, we do still have the Corvette keys and the... Uh, or not the Corvette keys. The Cor Corvette keys are our keys, but we, we have the keys to the police car and the radio extender, so let's go ahead and return those. Let's go ahead and put the radio back. Yeah, return the radio extender to the recharge stand. That does not look like a recharge stand. There's no recharging units. There there are no recharging elements on it. It's just a, a, it looks just like a table. All right, put the key back. No, put the key. I'm pretty sure I pressed the K key. Getting the keys on the key. I press the K key to hang the keys on the keyboard. Nice. I like that. I'm I'm very happy about that. All right. Seriously though, uh, I need to I need to put in that application before I leave. I'm pretty sure. Talk to Laura. No, I. Uh, what do you think, Laura? I'm in my civilian clothes. You really think that I sh should be out on patrol when I'm dressed like this? Don't you really? Okay. Can I? No, I shouldn't be. Right. Uh, transfer request. Do I do that here? How do I? Oh my goodness! How do how do I do this? I'm pretty sure that I need to do this here before I. Um, 
Oh, I guess I just I, I guess I do do it at the table outside, but Okay, hold on. Stack of blank office memos. Can I get a memo? They must remain on the table. Write a memo? Okay, the game could have been a little bit more clear about exactly how to do that. You write out a request for transfer to the narcotics division. That's what I've been trying to do for like five minutes now. All right, and let me guess. I don't have it in my inventory. Do I need to put the memo in the basket? Yes, you place a request into the in basket. It didn't even show up in my inventory, but I did have to actually put the memo in the basket because otherwise it would not have worked and it would have considered me to have not have had the... Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, wow. Gosh, okay, I think that was all I need, needed to do, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and head outside. And I believe that blue car in the lower right is our car. Why, why are we the only person, why are we the only police officer in this whole police department who gets to park his personal car here in this parking lot? Because the, this car up here, this is an unmarked police car. That is not a, uh, that's not somebody's personal car. I don't know. I don't get it. Anyway, can we un unlock the door? Oh, wait, no. There's no, there's no locking and unlocking of car doors in this game. It's just open door. There we go. Closed door. I am going to save the game here in VET. I learned this term from the game Vet, which was a great game, by the way. Maybe I should make a video about Vet. That was a super. That was that was the Grand Theft Auto of its day. That was, I think, one of the very first games that let you drive around a fully realized city with with live traffic and everything. That was an awesome game. Anyway, I am in my Vet. I'm gonna. Oh, I need to switch to the other disc because this disc has only two kilobytes free, and a saved game is four kilobytes. So if I click on disc. There we go. The other disc has 113 kilobytes free, which should be enough for. Uh, hopefully, it's enough for the rest of the game. So in Vet. Save and done. I am done with this game for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm sorry that uh, it went a little long. I wasted like half the video just uh, fooling around with the drunk guy that we had already arrested in the previous video, but I wanted to show off some other stuff and uh, go on a huge long-winded rant about how it's ridiculous that you... Anyway, let's not start again. Thanks again for watching, folks. I will talk to you all next time. I am out of here.